Crusader Kings 3. We're back with more artifact stuff. Last time we had them in the Royal Courtroom. We had some graphics previews. This time it's about the meat artifact features. It's about artifact modifiers. It's about historical artifacts and trinkets that will be in the game. And about growing pains and why it will be a while until that is completely finished because of the graphical goodness that needs to be integrated. So, uh, there are artifact features, of course. What the artifacts do with your court. All artifacts in the game can have a set of features that determine both how they were created as well as what they were made from. For example, oak, ash and pine are all features of the wood type, which is used to make wooden furniture, spare shafts, book covers, etc. While engraved, filigreed and painted are decoration type features, which skilled craftspeople can use to decorate artifacts to make them more suitable for royalty. So the main use of these features is to create immersive descriptions for an artifact. Whenever a new artifact is created, such as from an inspiration, we've heard last time, it will gain a set of appropriate features based on various factors including culture, geography, craftsmanship, quality, wealth of the capital city and event decisions made during the creation process. The features are then used by the artifact's description to emphasize any distinctive characteristics that it has. These features will not be represented in the 2D and 3D art of the artifact as they have far more varieties of feature that, that we could reasonably produce art for. So, we'll have a good representation in 3D art and in 2D art, and we'll have a beautiful description. But of course, the innumerable combinations cannot be uh, graphically interpreted. But we have a couple of examples here that will be very interesting to see. So, we have the Hausa Spear, for example, here that gives five prowess, quite a big bonus, control, territory defender advantage, plus three, also very significant. A long spare of very fine craftsmanship, the wrought iron head is mounted on an elegant fleuroya shaft that has been carved in delicate wavelets to reduce slippage when wielding it. Current holder is Sakin Gadi Kazuru of Daura, and that is probably how long it will be until it breaks and the question is of course can you repair these artifacts we'll see if that that is a thing to come or if you will have to re and re and reforge these artifacts now if they are used if they're weapons like this probably you'll have to remake them sooner or later so this is um, an artifact made for maybe two or three generations of rulers and not more there's the simple sword, for example. <laughs> Prowess already plus four, control territory defender advantage plus one. So it's a little bit less um, good than this. And this is also signified by this being a masterwork spare. And this is just a sword. A wrought iron sword of fine craftsmanship. The pommel is shaped in a series of rounded lobes and inlaid with copper. Just a solid art. Then we have just a normal spare, but that has prowess plus 3 and stress gain minus 20% and it only is um, 50 years that it can hold and it's probably that's the full the full lifespan and then it gets reduced I think. A long spare of fine craftsmanship. The wrought iron head is mounted on an elegant fur shaft that has been varnished to give it a rich dark shine from Duchess Matilda of Tuscany. Then we have a famed sword. As you can see that's even better than the masterwork. Prowess 6, army gold maintenance minus 9%, knight effectiveness plus 15%. A very, very good Sinhala sword. A wood steel sword of masterful craftsmanship. The hilt is engraved to display mythological beasts, albeit simplified. And the blade is etched to display the words learning without greed. And I like these because if you know the game, uh, about the game Dwarf Fortress, they have extensive descriptions of the items there. Of course, they have nearly no graphics, but <laughs> this is what this reminds me of. And it's always so epic we have when you have the story to the to the item then we have King Swen's famed dagger as you can see that also has prowess 4 intrigue plus stress level plus 1 a personal scheme power plus 10 which is a kind of a very cool combination that you have a dagger that supports your prowess and of course your intrigues that like <laughs> 
That dagger will be in your folded clothing ready to uh, murder an opponent. A folded iron dagger of excellent craftsmanship. The grip is covered in an electrum helix inlay and the blade is etched to display a relief of symbols tied to Danish culture. We have the masterwork maze, the Italian maze. Prowess plus four and army gold min and minus nine percent. See, as that's a little bit less good than the Sinhala sword. A flanged maze of fine craftsmanship. The wrought iron head has been etched to feature different Catholic motifs and then mounted on a solid wrought iron handle. So what do we have here? First we have geography in there, of course. We have the craftsmanship, then we have the materials, then we even have the religion and uh, as you can see here, displaying the world's learning without greed. So we have philosophy on that. So all, all kinds of things like that is that's that makes for a very cool description and that makes for an immersion that i really like combined with the bonuses that we've seen prowess of course for weapons is something very straightforward and then something tied to uh, tied to their use like the dagger would be used in intrigues that makes absolutely sense and like big combat weapons like the the sword or the maze are used um, when with an army or with a defending army in the case of the spare and the simple sword so that is that is really cool and the, that italian spare i don't know where the stress gain minus comes from but it's called it's probably a relaxing hunting spare like that that could be it so the thing they love about the system is not just that it will generate and display differences between two different axes your ruler commissions from a blacksmith it is that those differences will be even more pronounced between artifacts created in the different regions of the world this means artifact that you loot from your defeated foes while on crusade or during overseas raids will be far more distinct from other artifacts in your treasury serving as a memento of the great distances you or your ancestors traveled on their journeys and at this point i'm i'm currently expecting like when you have weaponry or maybe armor why don't we have something like in a role-playing game where you can equip your people <laughs> a little bit with it that would be something funny right you equip your king and then he can go uh, he can ride together with his army into into a battle and then fare better or worse depending also on his equipment of course of course they have many types of artifacts apart from weapons and some of the material and craftsmanship differences become truly pronounced when you start looking at the type of artifacts that are created explicitly for rulers to show off with for example a crown crafted in afghanistan might fe feature pieces of its legendary lapis lazuli while one made in the baltic region could instead feature an impressive chunk of ember as a centerpiece Different varieties of gemstones, cloth, lumber, shells, and animal horns. The range of possible combinations is truly vast. Yeah, it's probably nearly infinite. So, what do you have here? That's that's another set, and that's more like the decorative and the regal set. So let's have a deep look into that. Maharaja Jaya Simha's About Diplomacy book gives you prestige 0.1 per month monthly diplomacy lifestyle experience plus 10 percent also fit for a hundred years a fancy book that shows a deep understanding of diplomacy as it details art of feasting the cover is silver displaying a repeating image of a zoomorphic motif enunciated by the placement of moonstones wow that's that sounds really cool the masterwork headgear the gaznavid crown we have here that gives us even 0.4 prestige per month and prestige per night also added 0.1 per month so that that is something like that would you would expect from king arthur right courtier and guest opinion plus 15 but only 50 years of lifespan a fancy crown of fine craftsmanship the crown is forged from silver and set with small pieces of lapis lazuli now a crown should should hold its own a little bit longer right so mm, Maybe that repairing artifacts thing could become something. We'll see. Famed regalia, as you can see here. The Canada regalia. Prestige even 0.5 per month. Monthly renown plus 15%. Short reign duration minus 30%. And attraction opinion plus 15. So if, if you know that your, your death is close, you give that to your successor maybe. 
current holder is Maharaja Somiswara of Kalyani Chalyuka. Look here. An extravagant regalia set of masterful craftsmanship. It, it consists of a gold scepter set with pieces of spinel, fine velvet robes that have been embroidered with gold, and a large spinel cabochon necklace. And we have famed headgear, Chieftain Millers, only a Chieftain's crown. Remind you, Chieftain Millers' crown. <laughs> that gives 0 0.6 prestige per month and prestige per night again 0 0.1 per month independent ruler opinion plus 8 an elegant crown of excellent craftsmanship the crown is forged from gold and adorned with intricate filigree that frames a large ember centerpiece so maybe it will be good to hoard some gold instead of going for land all the time and then going for good artifacts and then go for the gold and then go uh, for rains because these artifacts will make your reign a lot easier but also the AI's reign then there's a simple goblet that also gives 0.3 prestige per month hostile scheme resistance plus four and court grandeur by base plus one so that also affects grandeur a drinking goblet of fine craftsmanship is made of bone with jasper inserts from a maharaja then a large wall ornament, so a tapestry. I like tapestry, so that's one of my favorite things. And they will also look magnificent in the courtroom when they get the graphics figured out. Prestige 0.4 per month, court ground area is plus three. So a decoration of the courtroom, like a goblet or even more a tapestry, increases the grandeur base by a lot. And these things that are worn increases the life or makes the life of the ruler a lot easier. A large velvet tapestry of excellent craftsmanship. The cloth depicts a court hearing. King Swind sits majestically at the center of the scene while vassals, emissaries, defeated enemies and servants wait in line to pay homage. I really like this and also the descriptions, which is why I read them out. Then there are artifact modifiers. We, we've already had a look at them. Every artifact is a set of character modifiers which are applied to their owner while they have them equipped. So you have to equip them. There are no slotless artifacts unlike in Crusader Kings 2. So in order to gain any benefit from owning an artifact at all, you must have it equipped in one of your personal slots. So we have personal slots. Weapon, armor, regalia, crown, trinket. Or court slots. So we have also court slots. Lectern, throne, wall hanging. By ensuring you can only have a set number of artifacts benefiting a character at once, it becomes much easier for us to balance artifacts and avoid the massive bonuses characters could gain in Crusader Kings 2 by accumulating vast libraries of forgotten lore, new inventions and piles of statues. Yeah, I mean, that, that had also some kind of thing, but okay, yeah, you cannot read like 50 books at once. That, that makes sense, right? <laughs> Especially not when, a, when you're a ruler. One guiding principle they used while designing the artifact modifiers is the no overtly supernatural effects rule that guided us during the base game's development. So Crusader Kings 3, in contrast to Crusader Kings 2, has not really supernatural effects. I mean, witches would disagree, but <laughs> for example, a masterly fully forged weapon granting prowess is straightforward and sensible as characters fight better with a good weapon in hand. Same weapon boosting advantage or army gold maintenance is maybe less obvious, but can still be explained by serving as a symbol of hope and inspiration for the soldiers in an army and boosting their morale. Something like no penalty for crossing rivers is nonsensical for an artifact weapon, though we're not giving rulers access to the equivalent of a fully functional staff of Moses. Modders, of course, can add whatever modifiers they wish to an artifact. So we can have um, mythical or mystical or magic Crusader Kings 3 in the mods, which is, which is something I'm also looking forward to. Historical artifacts and trinkets then. Of course, not all artifacts will be artisanal masterpieces. The important thing for artifacts is that they are meaningful to their owner in some way. This meaning doesn't need to be purely economical or f economic or functional. Instead, some artifacts may have great historical value, despite a plain appearance, such as Charlemagne's throne. throne. Other artifacts might only hold sentimental value, such as good luck charm, or a locket given to you by a lover which reduces stress. Finally, some artifacts may instead be relics of rather dubious provenance, yet still useful for those who believe in their power, or at least claim to. You can see the finger bones of a saint is piety only for Christians, 0.1 per month probably Catholic Christians. 
As you can see how that happens, a peddler in a cloak with dozens of baubles and knickknacks tuned onto it rattles up to me. You strike me as a seasoned collector, she pulls out and opens a battered chest brimming with bones from every limb imaginable. I have some of the rarest saintly finger bones, she says as she raises her finger, even foiled in gold. They are sold as singles, but I will grant a special price for a full set of ten. So this is why so many peasants have nine fingers nowadays. <laughs> Yeah, and then you have the finger bones of a saint. All eleven of them. Then we have growing pains. What is this about? It's about delaying it a bit. Or I mean, there's no release date, so. And in practice, they're not delaying it, but many people expect it, probably. I I was also looking forward to, like, I was like, a, maybe September, but look, it, it looks like more it's going to be October, November, things like that. Looking better each day that it passes. Now they want to be upfront and say it's going to take longer than many of us expect for the expansion to be released. Many reasons, technically challenging, of course, adding so much graphics in a rather graphically not bland, but rather simple game so far. Um, and adding that 3D throne room there, that's quite a task. We're doing things we've never done before from the ground up. I want a royal court that looks as grand as the mechanics that support it. Also had recent organizational changes that affect how they work. Um, split into three studios. So team has grown significantly and of course with more people. Uh, there needs to be another kind of organization and everything is a little bit more complicated for a while. While it may have a negative short term impact, it's definitely going to be a solid investment for the future of CK3 not only for the release of Royal Court, but also the future expansions and beyond, of course, the extended period of working from home makes things take longer than expected. And uh, yeah, that's something everyone can relate to. But there's a little extra teaser. This magnificent, magnificent screenshot of how it l will look when it's active. And you can see there's a skull, there's some kind of a, maybe that's the game of ore or something like that. There's a chest, there's, there's another little chest there. There's the king presiding over the throne room and a couple of people there, courtiers, more or less um, well in, well embroidered. That must be here the, the, the church bishop or something like that, maybe a nun, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe the wife of the ruler, the tapestries, all kinds of things here. Look magnificent. Uh, and I like it very much. Good things may take, may take time, and that's okay. That's absolutely okay. Uh, we, have, we have a lot of things to play, and probably mods are good to try out now while we're waiting. So have a great time until next time, and happy gaming to you. What do you like best about this? I probably like the description be uh, descriptions best. Uh, the whole concept of artifacts is something that I've really missed. The descriptions are really like the best. They are so quirky and delicate. They look just like they come from Dwarf Fortress. Like creating a little bit of story and a little bit of uh, glamour just through the use of words. Thank you for watching and happy gaming to you. Have a great time until next time and happy gaming. This is Immanuel Khan signing out. See you soon and happy gaming.